Hello and welcome to This Is. Ken, why does Sony continue to make the most cutting edge smartphones in the industry? They do? No, they don't. But we'll tell you all about why they still continue to make smartphones after this word from our sponsor, Storyblocks. Since day one, we have taken advantage of Storyblocks to help create This Is. For one low monthly fee, you get unlimited downloads of royalty free stock footage like this. And like this, this one's a, a personal favorite of mine. And it really does allow us to create the show. So definitely be sure to go check out Storyblocks at the link in the description. And again, huge shout out to Storyblocks for not only making this is possible, but also for sponsoring this episode. So I have switched over as my daily device to the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II, which is actually written out as Xperia 5 II for some reason. It definitely reads like a Final Fantasy <laughs> title, but um, no, okay, so I know you've spent a lot of time using this phone, yes. especially over the past week. Yep. Um, the first time I held onto this, I gotta say, I do like the physical feel. So Sony is a very interesting company in that they've been making smartphones for quite a while. But for the more recent devices, specifically the Xperia 5 and the Xperia 1, mm -hmm. they are aiming for something a little different. So the first thing to really notice with this phone, it is incredibly tall. This is a 21 by 9 aspect ratio display, which means that in the hand it's comfy, right? Like it's not very wide, it's narrower than even something like a Pixel 5. And with a 6.1 inch display, it means that it's a little tall in your pocket. But it actually, before we started shooting, you brought it up. <laughs> it's almost the same sort of like footprint as something like a Z Fold, obviously without the folding and the width, but it's very narrow, which means that it actually is a lot easier to use with like one handed use. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, you probably have your iPhone 12 mini there, but this kind of feels in a very similar width, which makes it very easier to manage. Obviously, you're gonna have to have your thumb, you know, to the top. Like reach up to the top to do some yeah. stuff, but this feels actually surprisingly nice in hand, maybe short of it just being very slippery. And when you look up to something like the Xperia 1, which is the slightly higher end, larger version of this, it's rocking like a 4K OLED, right? And in right. that same kind of cinema quality, 21 by nine sort of aspect ratio. That is one of the things that is unique about Sony phones, right? Let's start with positives because believe me when I say there are negatives coming up, right? So the hardware, I'll say is generic, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's glass, it's metal. I mean, there's not really anything going for it. I mean, it does have IP60, Something There's rating. some degree of water, water and dust resistance. Um, yeah. It actually has some legitimately nice hardware features around, including a headphone jack. Yes, you heard me right. Sound the alarm bells. A headphone jack. You're not going to find it there. Definitely not going to find it there. We have a headphone in jack here. In the garbage. Here, straight in the garbage. We also do have a couple of dedicated buttons. So you have a fingerprint sensor on the side. I'm still a big fan of this, honestly. Even though the new S21 has probably the best in display Off fingerprint sensor. Off the screen, sensor. like, it just makes it easy. You're going to have to hit yeah. that power button anyway that's in a good spot. Right? Yes. Um, you also have a dedicated shutter button for the camera. Now, most people, when they look at the Xperia, they're really looking at it for the camera. So Sony, of course, make many excellent cameras that we use here in the studio all the time. And one of the things is they brought a lot of that over to their Xperia smartphones, right? So the default camera app is, or sorry, there actually are multiple camera apps. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> the Photo Pro camera app mm -hmm. is very much gives you that same kind of feeling. So I can adjust things on the fly. And when, especially when you look through the menus, I mean, it is very very similar to something like it actually an A7. does look like yeah we have uh, Sony A7S threes in the office like you know pretty good for video like obviously they're designed for more professional uses yeah and that actually carries over the same exact menu for the most part which yeah. is very nice to see you have three cameras you have a ultra wide wide and a 3x telephoto. Okay. Solid, solid. And of course, Sony, as a company who makes a lot of cameras, they manufacture these, they use the Zeiss coating. Look, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of the ingredients that are very, very nice. However, here's the thing, right? Okay. It doesn't come together in a cohesive package because for every good thing I can say about this phone, there's somewhere else where Sony has dropped the ball, okay? So say cameras, right? Okay. Cameras are decent and the app is great and having the physical button. The problem is the photos aren't amazing. Right? They yeah. feel like they're behind on the computational photography. It feels like it takes a great individual still, but the Pixel, the Samsungs, the iPhones, all of the really more modern smartphones of the world are taking multiple images at the same time, blending the best parts. Yeah. With this, it doesn't deliver that same level of quality. The thing about smartphone cameras and smartphone camera apps that yeah. I usually you know, try to keep in mind is the computational photography is usually way smarter than you, whether you're you know, an average layman or even a professional. And I think professionals should be in this mindset of 
no matter what the limitations are with whatever app you're using or whatever, you know the limitations of the tools and how they work. I don't think a pro mode is what you need on a phone. I mean, look, it's nice to be able to do that sometimes if I'm sitting on a tripod or whatever, but most of the time, you're right, I'm not gonna go through and adjust, oh, my white balance is slightly off here. I mean, if I'm in a studio setting, I will, but Absolutely, 99% yeah. of the photos I take on a phone, I'm not gonna do that. And the fact that we get these pro modes, which are cool, but don't really do that much for you, and we lose some of the basic features, like a night mode, to me, it feels like it is meant to be a little bit more of like post-processed through that photo app. Right. But then there's a bunch of other stuff here that seems great on paper, but it kind of falls apart in practice. The actual software, it's easy to forget how much is missing out of stock Android, right? If you use the right. Pixel or you use like a OnePlus, you think, oh, this is stock Android. It's not. There's still a lot of stuff that's built in to add. There's so many things that feel so basic with the way like the notifications look. And you right. go through like so many settings, I'm like, oh, right, this is like built into Android. Oh, wait, no, it's not, right? They have some things like they have like the screen mode. It is a 120 hertz display. I'll give them that. But then there are so many other things I've just like, I find myself really wishing I had like better control over. I think this goes a long way into saying that there are reasons why the Samsungs of the world, and even, let's go as far down as maybe even the OnePluses of the sure. world, um, there are reasons why people go for those phones over something like the Sony, because they're trusted, you know, they have gone through that R&D. We can talk about a lot of other Sony phones, such as the Sony Xperia Pro, which is essentially the Xperia 1. It's got the 4K OLED, right, which is great, but it's meant to be used more so for like live streaming and whatnot. So Marquez did a video on it. It is $2,500. Has an HDMI in port that you can use to have it act as a as a as a camera monitor. Yeah. And I will take his exact words or I might be paraphrasing a little bit, but that is a phone that is made literally for 20 people. It's a really limited amount of people, which is yeah. great that Sony's make that, right? Like I always like something that's weird and wacky and whatnot. But the price of that phone is over double the standard experience. Yeah, one. and like it's, it's weird and wacky, but not in the way that I think will push them forward. Absolutely, like, there is a lot of weird and wacky. One of the ones that is on the table right now, the Galaxy Z Fold. Yeah, this is about as weird and wacky as it can get. Pushes the bar forward, right? There's a lot of innovation here. There's a reason why I think Samsung is doing a push on foldables. Period. Because yeah. I mean, they have the resources to do it. The thing about this is that I think they're in a position to actually change the industry yeah. with what their vision is like by, this, Sony, by this logic. Sony making phones that are unique, right? I mean, again, the form factor is unique. The fact that you have some of these like software features like the, the camera app is unique, but then there are so many things that it lets you down with, right? So performance is good, right? Snapdragon 865, this is a phone that came out for reference uh, late last year. So it obviously doesn't have the, the Snapdragon 888 and everything. But then you look at stuff like the 5G support, which isn't really a thing, right? It's a Snapdragon 865. It has 5G in other markets, right. but that 5G does not work in the United States, right? So this is a 4G phone. It also doesn't have wireless charging. It has- For it being a glass back too? It has a glass back. I mean, to be fair, it has like 20 watt uh, wired charging, which is fine, but it's been a while since I've used a quote unquote flagship that does not have wireless charging. I will always go toward the phone that either works best for my use case, like the iPhone, or in the case of my secondary phone, the Galaxy Z Fold 2. You're gonna go back to the Z Flip, right? Absolutely. Like I think, especially on the Android side, we're starting to see things kind of shift a little bit yeah. toward you know more interesting form factors, because every phone looks different, right? Yes. The ones that stand out for us, we wanna use. I'm happy that Sony, are making phones that are in different form factors like this, right? I actually do really think that there's something to a tall, skinny device. It's easier to use with one hand. You do still get the screen real estate because I really think about when I'm using my phone, I care about like, oh, can I see two photos on Instagram at the same time? Or how much more text can I read? Like, yeah. I'd rather have that than something that's wide. And the fact that it's got like stereo speakers and headphone jack and, you know, a very nice display. It has a lot of things hertz. that I'm sure Sony imagines people would like a lot, Absolutely. especially with them making a lot of entertainment focused products. I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of quality of life things. I'm sure this headphone jack is phenomenal. Yeah. The phone is good, but the thing is good is not good enough anymore when there's excellent phones everywhere. Yeah. And there's so many things like the software. Why is the software so basic and simple? Why does it have none of these features or like these very basic versions of features that have been really well sort of fleshed out? Like I'm not trying to say that Sony needs to become Samsung and build 18 different stock versions of the apps. I'm not saying that, but like, there's just so many things that seem so simple. It just doesn't feel like they're going the extra mile on like the camera app and some of these other things that push it over the edge. And yeah. the fact that it doesn't have like wireless charging I, and 5G at $950, 
I, I just, it's hard. This it's is hard. This is also something that like, I mean, I haven't said this in a video before, but this is something that I also give um, LG flag, at least up until oh. recently. Like LG, for the longest time through the V series, through the G series, they've made the same phones over and over again. And a lot of the times the designs would be outdated. It didn't seem like they put a lot of thought and R and D into figuring out what customers wanted. They went and did stuff that they thought people would like, sure. but it, that was their own idea of it. I don't think they actually fully understood that. With at least on the L, on the LG side, yeah. though, they're starting to do some really wacky stuff. Dual dual screen cases. Yeah, they have the you know the LG wing. They're at least trying to figure out some new avenues to push their bar forward. Sony is. They're making tall phones. They're, ma the they're making tall tech. phones. They're making, you know, really expensive camera monitors that also happen to be phones with 5G that you can live stream with. Cool. For who? For why? Going back to another point, and this is more to tie the things that other companies are doing as far as innovation goes. Yeah. Um, Sony used to innovate so much, yes. right? W whether or not it was actually practical is another story, <laughs> but they would do wacky, wacky stuff. You had mentioned at previous points, we did a video on Sony Vios and how crazy some of those designs could be. Yeah. Um, if we look at the Sony Ericsson devices, like before smartphones even came out, They're there were some excellent. crazy designs that might have even been way more forward thinking for their own good. Yeah. The the Sony of today mm -hmm. does not push the bar as much no. in a lot of the industries that I feel like Here's, might matter a little more to the, some people. The problem is this, right? Sony make good phones, but they're not great. It feels like they either need to make a decision. Are Sony gonna go the Samsung route? Because obviously they make some of the components inside, like such as the cameras, right? Of actually making this a real serious part of their business. Are they going to double or triple their investment in making these phones more feature complete, where they're not dropping out wireless charging in 5G at $1,000? And are they actually gonna be delivering some of these new and more innovative form factors to stay ahead of everyone or to try to catch up really? Or are they gonna just stop making phones? Because I know that they're clearly selling some of these, but to me, the price and the feature set of this phone doesn't make sense. I can't justify this for pretty much anyone. How much was this? $950 here unlocked in the United States, which is significantly more expensive than something like the S21 that I was coming from, which I like better in literally every single possible way, except that it's slightly wider. I'm sure you Other can- that. I'm sure you can buy this subsidized for a bit cheaper, but I would imagine it wouldn't be that far off from something like another flagship, like an iPhone no, or a Samsung not. Galaxy, right? Like It's expensive. To me, it feels like the Xperia line exists because they still sell some of them in markets such as Japan, yeah. right? And it's probably still enough that they're, if not breaking even, just losing a little bit of money and like, okay, cool, at least we have a foothold in space. Yeah, I feel like- I We feel have like, the PlayStation app pre-installed. I mean, I feel like this is the kind of thing of like Docomo or SoftBank, you yeah. know, they make a version of this phone that is actually branded with you know, the carrier, mm -hmm. right? And they can sell these for a decent profit to whoever wants it over there because so, that's Sony's home market and they know how to market it there. So I but, don't switch my daily driver that yeah. often, right? I mean, for the last year, it's been primarily Z Flip. I spent some time in the Pixel 5. I spent some time recently in the S21. And now I've spent some time in the Xperia 5 Mark II, right? I try a lot of phones, but actually like posting up and like living in, with them for extended periods of time as a daily driver, it's not something I do that often. This has been the first phone I've used as a daily driver in quite a while that I've been actively ready to like dip. Like it, there's just been enough little things about this phone. I like the S21, I'm like, oh my God, I missed the S21, I missed the Z Flip. Like the Pixel 5, all of these devices that think were a far better overall package right. than, than the Xperia. My point is this, I want Sony to succeed. I want to try and spend time with more of these weird, unique devices that they make. There are a lot of good ideas here, but they need to nail that execution. We can't get half-baked devices and charge flagship prices for them. Yeah. There's simply way too many phones out there that are way too good Even for that to make sense. Even I would take a Pixel 5 that is $300 less than this any day over the, uh, the Xperia. Exactly, it's just, there's a lot of missed opportunities. There's like mixed execution, like, I want to like this thing a lot. There's, it, there, it, there is a decent amount going for it, 
but it's so hard to recommend when there's so much out there in this competitive land space. I'm going to be very curious to know, what do you think about the state of Sony phones in 2021? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to ring a ling the ding a ling bell for more rants about Sony and Playstations and, and Xboxes and other phones and various pieces of technology. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Sony, please don't be upset with us.